The following is an EHC Media Production. What's going on, RWT family? This is your boy, Moses Marquez, the voice of the Major League Show, and I'm coming at you to tell you if you enjoy the way I go in-depth in all things New Japan Pro Wrestling on the Major League Show, then you will love the way I go into all things pro wrestling on Smart Mark Radio. We talk WWE, Impact, Lucha, Indies, and everything in between. So again, if you want to listen to a little Smart Mark Radio and you consider yourself a Smart Mark, check out smartmarkradio.podbean.com. Again, smartmarkradio.podbean.com. You can also check us out on SoundCloud under the artist name Moses Marquez. Thanks, guys, and we hope to catch you on later this week. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monday Night Raw! EWA! Do you play WWE 2K18 on the PS4? Would you like to play against other like-minded players in a very unique online league that's unique because we are more committed to storylines than just a straight-up competitive league. The league is still very competitive, but we also try to run things like a bit of a TV show. Check out the YouTube channel and the Facebook page in the description below if you're interested. For honest, uncut, and often controversial coverage of all things wrestling, there's one place to get it, with some good old banter thrown in. Join the Butcher and myself, two-time knowledge champion Mike Larkin, along with your host Dazzy Dangerously, every Friday for the Max Wrestling Podcast, with championship specials every two to three months. WWE, New Japan, Ring of Honor, and the company with many names and more. On Facebook. YouTube, SoundCloud, Podomatic, iTunes, and Stitcher. We must now bid you adieu, goodbye, Mwah. and good night. Bye. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode number one of the Smack Down and Out podcast. Your weekly recap of all things SmackDown Live. I am your host, Daniel Crimmins, host of the Hell in a Podcast, and what this is going to be each week is kind of going through uh, the ins and outs of SmackDown Live, what happened, what didn't happen, what should have, and all things in between. So without further ado, let's get right into what we had from this week's episode. This week's episode came from the SNHU Arena in Manchester, New Hampshire, um, as, as typical, you know, we had the usual intro, Michael Cole welcoming us, all that. Um, opening segment was Ms. TV, which honestly, in my opinion, is always a good, uh, good segment to go with. Um, he, he just brings it. Um, I think they need to put the WWE title on him sometime soon. Maybe he should be the guy to be AJ. Oh, but that's beside the point. His guests, anyway, were Team Hell No, Kane and Daniel Bryan. Miz, of course, taunted Daniel about, you know, the usual stuff. Um, basically said that, you know, one of their biggest challenges is the Bludgeon Brothers, which will be happening this Sunday. Um... They, you know, Dan Kane said that, you know, they know what Rowan and Harper are capable of blah 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 blah. Um Honestly I thought it was a great segment. Um basically went back and forth. Um ended up with kind of uh Harper and Rowan and Sanity and New Day kinda having a big brawl, which honestly was it kinda campy? Yeah. Yeah, it was. But it was entertaining. After that, we kind of got the graphic advertising Asuka versus Ellsworth in a lumberjack match. Awesome. Then we had the most popular segment in all of WWE. A backstage walking segment. Riveting television, folks. Really. 
Um, but this time we got to see it with Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, and after that, we went to a uh, commercial break. After the break, we had you know the announcers talking about you know, the Miz TV segment, and Paige announced that there would be a ten man tag match very later on in the night. After that, we had AJ versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, pretty good match. Was it their best match together? No, not at all. Was it their worst match? Far from. Honestly, I think their worst match was WrestleMania. Uh, the match looked to be in the books for AJ, but Rusev pulled them off and caused a disqualification. So AJ wins that by DQ. Um, it looked like uh, Nakamura and Rusev were going to beat AJ down. But Jeff Hardy comes out and kind of saves the day and all that. And wouldn't you know, Teddy Long, well, I'm sorry, I mean, I mean, Paige, Paige, comes out and uh, makes a tag team match for the two. Um, I believe I'd made a, I'd made a comment, you know, an RWT, you know, I thought, hmm, since when, I thought, since when was uh, Teddy Long back as general manager? Um, anyway, we went right to AJ and Jeff Hardy versus Shinsuke and Rusev. Again, quick little tag match, but they they can be effective, and then they can't be effective. Honestly, I didn't think this was necessarily needed, other than a way to get each person on TV. Um, Rusev and Nakamura got the victory after Rusev hit the Machka kick on Jeff Hardy. Um, you know, pins him and got the victory for the team. Um, after the match, you know, Rusev and Aiden English celebrate. Um, Rusev did the usual trash talk, which I, I'm I'm really a fan of Rusev. You know, I think, you know, he's shown more than he's just a typical anti-American guy. You know, I, I think he's really got some real talent. Um, went to the announcers talking about Extreme Rules on the network this Sunday. Um, then we have the Still Become, Team Hell No, and the New Day versus Sandy and the Bludgeon Brothers. Um, after that, we had a, another backstage segment with Ellsworth trying to train for the Lumberjack match and Carmella coming bullying him and telling him he better take care of Asuka and all that he calls her babe, winks at her and basically she threatens to beat him up if he ever winks at her tells him not to let her down basically this is Carmella and Ellsworth all over again nothing new here uh, go to a commercial break and after the break, we had the Lumberjack match. Asuka versus James Ellsworth. Um, we all kind of knew what this was going to be. Um, you know, Ellsworth playing the sleazy heel. Um, Ellsworth tries to get out. Everyone brings him back in. Lumberjacks end up fighting each other. Uh, Carmella tries to interfere. Asuka takes her down and ends up making Ellsworth tap out to the Asuka lock. Honestly, I thought the Asuka lock this time looked a little sloppy, but, you know, there's only so much you can do. Um, after the match, we got a recap. Oh, sorry. Um, after the match, Carmella attacked them, or attacked uh, Asuka, and... Got, Asuka got hit with some kind of spray. Um, then we get a, another earlier in the night segment where we got basically a recap of the uh, Miz TV segment, which again, who doesn't love Miz TV? Um, everyone kind of new, new day and Team Hell No are backstage arguing. Biggie gets everyone 
on page around the page on point all all that I think honestly I think Big E is a star of that group and I think you know they need to they need to push him um then we go to a break and after that we have a segment with Paige and Carmella and Ellsworth um basically what happened Paige basically told them that you know Carmella is going to be in a fair play with Asuka at the pay-per-view and that sorry that Ellsworth is going to be on a shark cage above the ring probably he'll get out of it you know somehow because honestly the, the whole shark cage gimmick has been done over and over and over again the next match we have which was Sin Cara versus Andrade Cien Almas honestly I enjoyed this match you know it was, it was a good Smackdown match um I do think Almas is being wasted with this um personally I would have debuted him against Jeff Hardy immediately I would have had him win the United States title because honestly I look at Andrade Cien Almas and that dude has money written all over him you know they're they're looking for a new Hispanic star to get over with the crowd a new Latin star to get over I think it's him and if the rumors of Rey Mysterio coming to back to SmackDown when he does eventually resign are true, I want to see Andrade Cien Almas versus Rey Mysterio. I think those two, I think they will be able to tear it up, tear it down, or burn it down, so to speak. Anyway, back to the match. Um, good back and forth, um, interference and all that. Andrade Cien Almas gets the win. Alma stands tall to celebrate the victory and the announcers again hype up Extreme Rules on the WWE Network. And then we go to a backstage segment with Sanity doing their typical kind of weird promos. And this time they're giving warnings to the New Day and Hell No. Bludgeon Brothers walk in and say let the bludgeoning begin. They have a stare down, which honestly, I think it's going to lead to New Day. Or sorry, not New Day. It's going to turn to um, Bludgeon Brothers versus Sanity, probably at SummerSlam. Anyway, we get the stare down, and then we go back to a, another commercial. This brings us to tonight's ten-man main event. The New Day and Team Hell No versus Sanity and Bludgeon Brothers. I, I don't know what to, to think of this match. Um, I, I did enjoy it. It wasn't the best. Um, honestly, I think they're wasting Daniel Bryan's talents on this, you know. Uh, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me um, but hey if if they're gonna do that go ahead and go with it um, basically it went back and forth Daniel Bryan ends up getting an upper hand and the finish came with Gillian Dane returning to the ring and kind of coming at Big E Biggie spears him from the apron to the floor. Brian gets fired up, does his whole shtick, and nails a flying knee on Eric Young and gets the victory. Now, to me, the aftermatch segment made the whole the whole show. What we had was a little kind of comedic bit on the ramp with Kane and Daniel Bryan kind of doing the yes no yes no bit and we had Daniel Bryan trying to kind of mock Kane 
and do the whole fireworks pyro. Nothing happens. Kane is trying to tell him, you know, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing, this and that. Finally, Daniel Bryan does the whole Kane raising arms, and we actually got the return of Pyro. And I haven't seen Pyro on WWE TV, and I can't remember the last time. Um, I, I thought it was cool to see it again. And it was a nice segment to end the show with. And the show went off the air with them celebrating. Overall, <laughs> decent show. Um, not the best episode I've seen. Um, I, I don't blame the talent. I think the writing was just kind of half-assed. As, you know, I, I'm not the only one who thinks that. Um, it could be a good show this Sunday. Um, I'm more excited over the SmackDown matches than the Raw matches. Um, I think SmackDown generally does better with building storylines. Um, we certainly didn't have a Bobby Lashley, Sami Zayn thing. And we don't have to deal with... Uh, Bobby Lashley and um, Roman Reigns. But I digress. So that was your SmackDown recap. Which will lead us to a couple of matches now. I'm not going to discuss all of them at this point now. But with regards to Extreme Rules. Um, matches that I'm personally excited for. I'm looking forward to AJ versus Rusev. Um, AJ probably will pull off the win. Personally, I would love nothing more than to see Rusev beat AJ Styles and become the WWE champion. You know, I, I think he's got the talent. And e even if it's just short reign, at least it's something. The SmackDown Tag Team Titles... Bludgeon Brothers versus Team Hell No. I think we all know what's going to happen here. Um, Miz is probably going to come out and cost Daniel Bryan the match. Probably leading to those two at SummerSlam. Asuka versus Carmella? No. Just no. There's no way Carmella loses the title before SummerSlam. Asuka is going to be the champion. But it's going to happen at SummerSlam. That is where Asuka will finally become the women's champion. Not before. Not after. It's going to be SummerSlam. The perplexing match placement goes for the pre-show. Where we have New Day versus Sanity in a... I believe it's a tables match. I don't know why they're doing it on a pre-show. Eh. Honestly, I'd much rather see Roman versus Bobby Lashley on a pre-show. Ain't gonna happen. Heck, that'll probably close this show. But it's just odd placement nonetheless. And I believe the other SmackDown match is for the United States Championship Shinsuke versus Jeff Hardy. I'm looking forward to that match. Um, I think, honestly, I think AJ, or sorry, not AJ. I believe Shinsuke Nakamura will come out as the new United States champion. He needs it. After what they did to him with the WWE title, he needs the victory more than Jeff Hardy does. So I think we're going to look at at least one new champion coming out of Extreme Rules. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was episode number one of SmackDown and Out. It's just a quick episode. I'll, I'll, we'll, I will be looking to add more segments to SmackDown and Out coming up in future episodes. Until next week, my name is, ben, my name is Daniel Crimmins, and you have been listening to SmackDown and Out.